What up YouTube, Moose coming at you once again. This time we are going to unbox the Mobius 53 foot reefer trailer. So let's get started. All right, so let's start off with the box. So as you can see, it is a Mobius Models. Can't see because it's off screen. Mobius Models 53 foot trailer with the reefer option. Um, is part number 1302, 125th scale. Obviously it's a kit, super detailed. I kind of disagree with that. I mean, it's a trailer. There's not much to it, but hey, they say level three, ages 15 and up. So flip to the side. It's not much. Other side, same thing. The ends, there's not much. I can't really show you that because we can't get far enough away. Uh, on the back, they tell you a little bit about the model and the fact that it has tandem axle, you know, the optional refrigeration kit, chrome wheels, um, completed kit measures 26 and a half inches long, six and a half inches high. So it is a big old model when it's done. Um, you can see here they talk about some of the optional things and whatnot about it. So the refrigeration unit on the front. It's got some chrome end plates, the landing gear, the optional fuel tank of course to go if you're doing the reefer, the tandem axles with realistic wheels and chrome, chrome wheels themselves. Again, the chrome back end of it. It's got some decals for herb, another cool move. And then they show a little bit about the uh, Lone Star. So, cracking the top open. Greeted by the sprues and a piece of cardboard to protect it. The instructions and a bunch of plastic. We'll pull the plastic out of the way for the moment. And start with the instructions. So they give you a little bit about information, how to assemble a course, and then it dives right in. So construction of it, fairly simple. Let me zoom you in a little bit more so you can see. So start off by opening up some holes on the end plate and the bottom if you're gonna do the reefer option as well as for where the fuel tank goes. From there, you put on the ends, the sides, and the top. Fairly simple, gives you part numbers on that. They also give you a little bit of text on what's going on in each step. Uh, step two, let me zoom out just a little bit more. You start out by building some airbags, attaching those to the um, tandem, the slider frame, um, building up the suspension arms with the actual like axles. Uh, those then get fit to the slider frame airbag assembly. From there you build the brake actuators, all four sets of them, and then those get added along with the actuator rod, excuse me if you heard that. <laughs> um, before you fit the mud flaps and the suspension lock as well as braking mechanisms. And again they give you a rundown of what's going on in every step so you have an idea of what's going on there. Next page, we'll come back to that. Step three, you're just basically building up the wheels that sets of them, attaching them together. And they make sure to tell you which side faces out on the wheels because the markings are only on the one side of the tire, which makes sense. You're not going to see between them anyways. Uh, step four turns to the undercarriage, so building up the landing gear as well as adding the foot before attaching that to the bottom of the trailer. And you have the option of retracted or extended legs on this one, a little bit of bracing. And again, there's two options for the kingpin. There's a small one and a large one. It looks like the only difference is, is how tall it actually is. You know, the shorter and the small, taller one. Um, putting on some trailer lights, attaching the slider rails as well as the air reservoir tank and the rear bumper. Um, from there you build up the fuel tank. Again, it's an optional piece if you're going to do that. So it looks like it's a four or five piece assembly. 
that gets added. You add the landing gear crank handle as well as some clearance lights and they do have some emblems that attach on the front left and right of the trailer. Next up you add the tandem with the wheels and stuff to that. The wheels clip onto the tandem so one time thing I'll see how that looks. I might have to paint the axles a different color to kind of cover the rear lenses so your brake lights and whatnot and some like grab handles to open and close the trailer doors. Then the final step, step five, is optional of course and that includes building up the reefer unit so it's fairly simple. There's a big chunk of plastic where vents fit to for the system and then a couple steps so that they can look at the what would be the control panel which they don't seem to model here but I'm assuming there's going to be a uh, decal for it. So on the back side of the instructions then they give you some suggested paint colors for everything so the different parts and then the color they suggest of course it's an overall white trailer so that'll be easy and depending on the way the chrome pieces look I might decide to do redo the chrome. So with that out of the way, let's dig into some plastic. First up, let me grab a pair of scissors so I can cut some bags. We have the tires. One conveniently helps itself out. So, good amount of tread to them, if my camera will focus. So that side doesn't have any markings, as you can see, that side does. Let me pull it off camera. So it just says Energy 275-80R22.5. I'm not sure if those are an actual name brand. But all your tires there, I mean, they look good. There's no, oh, there is a bit of a center seam that'll have to be cleaned out. That's unfortunate. But nothing we can't handle. Uh, let me grab the lid to put the parts in. Alright. Save some of the chrome for last. So the first sprues, a lot of these are bagged together, which is unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. We have two duplicate sprues molded in this white that's got like the slider rail, the axle, the inner part of the wheel. I'm guessing that's the brake drums. Part came off the sprue, it's right there. So the brake actuators, the rods, and stuff like that. Uh, landing gear. I'll give you a little closer up look. Not a whole lot of detail, but I mean, there's not a lot of detail to be had. Show you the reverse side. So yeah, as you can see, like I said, the wheels seem to snap on, so we'll see if that's exposed or not in the end. So, like I said, match sprue. We'll go ahead and throw that in the box. Then the other sprue in that bag has the reefer up. So there's the main unit itself, the two vents, and the mud flaps. And zoom in. So the mud flaps actually have the Great Dane logo in Boston on them. It's raised detail. So see if we can't pick that out if there's not a decal. Pretty good detail for the vents. I might. I don't know if I'm going to drill those out or not because there's nothing really back there to see. So. Back sides of the mud flaps are of course blank. The next bag has three sprues in it. And it's kind of a jumble of parts. So we'll start here with this sprue. So this one's got like the rear bumper, the cross brace for the landing gear, the fuel tank ends, I'm assuming, the air reservoir tank, and 
I believe that's something to do with the landing gear. Yeah. So I'll give you a closer up look at those as well. Too close, my bad. A little bit of detail on that bumper. Next up, well, there's definitely some loose parts here. I don't know if they broke off a sprue. Next up is the slider frame, the like axle or the landing gear legs themselves as well as the logos for the Great Dane and a couple of miscellaneous parts. So I'll give you a close up of that. So there's the two king pins. Like I said, one's shorter and one's longer so that you have that option when you're assembling it. I'm not sure what the rod is for or that piece. Let's see the Great Dane logo there. Might be a little hard to see, make out on camera. As well as more parts for the legs. So the slider frame is definitely a big old chunky part. That'll be fun. Hopefully it fits in there well. Um, actually, it looks like they... Uh, oh! Okay. So they broke the sprue so that's the landing gear crank so that'll have to be fixed that's unfortunate and then the fuel tank so one piece for the whole body still unfortunately seems to clean on the top and the bottom that's nothing we can't take care of and then parts for the brakes and a little more. So it's unfortunate that the sprue was broken and what resulted in one part broken. Hopefully that's the only thing I encounter. Um, I guess next we'll go to the big pieces. So these two, let me cut the bags open. Y'all didn't hear that. Good thing it's some chunky plastic. Let's set that bag aside. Is the two sidewalls. I mean, they are ginormous. I will zoom out as far as I can go for y'all. So the inside of the trailer, of course, it's got a little bit of ribbing to kind of help with some strength. There are some big old thick locating lugs for the top and bottom. Obviously there's some cleaning up to do because there's flash. No biggie, you can also tell where they nipped it off themselves. The outside of the trailer, I mean, there's not, it's, it's not much, I wouldn't expect much on the outside even, but I mean, it is a big old piece of plastic. So, fairly flexible. Hopefully when it glues up with the little lips and stuff like that, it'll glue up solid. So there's the two halves of that. My bad for hitting y'all. Slide those back into the bag. Definitely gonna require some some serious paint for this one. I might almost go for some rattle cans. I don't typically like rattle cans, but that is a lot of surface to paint. All right, then the next bag contains another pair of parts. So first one I'll show you is the top panel for the truck. So here's the front edge. They've actually got some nice detail for the front corners, the bracing and such. I mean, it's just a big piece of plastic. Almost looks like a sink mark, but you can't feel it, which is good. The sides, 
they'll definitely have to do some cleanup because you can see the remnants of where they again cut it where the lights fit the underside so now you can see the locating lugs for the different the side panels and you can see the lip where the side panel itself fits so that's great that means I'll be able to get a nice good clean really fill on the um, the glue it's gonna take a lot of glue for this actually that brings up a question um, what would everybody suggest for the glue on that because that's such a long one I don't know if to me an extra thin makes sense or not and then the next piece is the floor of it so this is the inside of it of course so there's a little bit of ribbing and I mean again it's still fairly flexible I mean it's very flexible plastic which is great um, you can see where the holes are for the slider rails and all that on the side I don't know how well the camera will pick it up but you can see all the like rivet holes and stuff like that going down the entire length of it good raised detail Again, I don't know how well that comes in. And then the bottom side of it. So you can tell where the kingpin fits. The landing gear's got its locating spots. Keep on down. Not sure what those are for. I'll have to go back and look. And then it's got nice notches where the tandems fit, where the bumper fit in. So really good detail overall. I mean, for a trailer, <laughs> I mean, how much how much can you expect out of it? So, second to last bag, I'm getting into some of the chrome pieces now. And again, I'll put these back in the bag afterwards as well. So there's two two identical sprues. I'll just show you the one. Put it in the box. But here's the other one. Let's zoom down for y'all. So it's actually not bad looking chrome. I might hit it with like a dull coat because it's kind of like the, the Tamiya, not the Tamiya, the Ravel chrome where it's just too much. But you can see the wheel hubs. I'm not sure what some of the other stuff's for, but I assume it's like. So it looks about the size of the wheels, so those might be like innards, ends of the air reservoir tank, I'm guessing. Show you the reverse side. It's not bad looking. Good detail on it. And actually, I guess those wheel, the axle ends will fit inside that hub there. You won't see it, so it'll pass through here. And then the, I said the end cap is solid, so you won't see it. So that's cool. And last chrome screw. Oop. I almost dropped that one. So this chrome sprue has the front and rear panel. As you can tell, I mean, it's a... Pretty darn shiny. However, if you get it in the correct light, you can see it's kind of, I'm not gonna be able to replicate it. I can see it in, per oh there, no. It's kind of like streaky, like it's not very smooth. It feels smooth, but it's definitely not. So on the front panel, And got the where your air hose is attached speaking of they don't include air hoses so I'm gonna have to address that one and eh, you can see me and up here's a little box so you can see on the inside with the where you got to drill if you want to do the reefer and then the back panel again some really good raised detail on the door handles and such and the hinges so that'll build up pretty cool Regardless, it's going to need a like a wash to make some shadows pop. Um, almost forgot a sprue. 
So the final sprue this is the clear parts. So you got lenses and then like side markers and stuff like that. Nothing, nothing crazy. And having reached the bottom of the box, all that that leaves us with is the decals. I have previously looked at the decals, of course, because I wanted to see, never having done a Mobius model, how the decals were. So, because the model's so big, there's actually two identical sprue or sprues decal sheets of this one and I assume it's mainly for the stripes here that go down the side why they didn't just do a separate sprue of just those is beyond me at that point but I mean I got plenty of decals as spares for whatever I want down the road so like I said those are the ones that go down the side and the markings for the company themselves as well as like trailer number and a bit of information And then the other sprue, or excuse me, decal sheet, wow, is, has the, like the reflective tape that goes down the sides as well as the corners. And it looks pretty good. I mean, I think it might just be me, but I do believe that it is just ever so slightly the grays are the gray boxes are a little wider than the red and the white stripes but it could just be me and then down here we have some markings and they are not very legible i mean you can read the big text but the small text is it's lost but that's fine by me you know, it'll still look great. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed that first look at the Mobius Models Reefer trailer. Um, I can't wait to dig into this, and whenever I get the International Lone Star, I am definitely going to give you guys an unboxing of that one. So for now, take care and have a good one.